Hey guys, Brian from PFC here. Uh, today we're going to talk to you guys about a little bit of a critical incident debrief. Some of you guys have seen in social media circles, on the news as well, an incident that occurred recently in the Midwest. Uh, a guy was in custody. He was a double homicide suspect. Had committed one murder, attempted murder on another suspect that was, or a victim rather, that was injured and in the hospital. He was in custody in the police station in an interrogation room. Officer came in, and as he was attempting to do a handcuff swap out, the bad guy who kept looking over and over and over and over and over at his firearm did a violent grab for the firearm. We don't know if it was for homicidal purposes or suicidal purposes, and frankly, it doesn't matter. So let's talk about how to solve this problem because it's actually pretty simple. So first, it's policy or rules or regulations in different places, whether or not we have firearms inside of the interrogation room. So that could be one way that we could have mitigated this problem in the first place. Let's say that your agency goes one way or the other. That's not really the issue at hand. Our next issue is mindset. Every single person that we lay hands on to put cuffs on, take cuffs off, or do a cuff transfer, we need to think to ourselves, ask ourselves, tell ourselves, they are going to fight. They are going to resist. As we say in CQB, never be surprised. So the activity around this individual, if that officer had walked in and he had said, this guy is going to fight, that he would have gone in there with a much different uh, mindset, a much different position, posture, and platform. If a beekeeper is gonna take and move in to work on a beehive, he puts on his bee suit first. He expects for those bees to come out, swarm, and try to sting him. So that's an issue right there. Again, we said, likely don't bring a gun. Next, bring a buddy. There was no shortage of responding officers. We saw multiple officers respond in seconds. Where were those officers before the encounter began? How hard is it to walk up to someone and say, let me borrow you for just a moment. I need you to back me up. If we have a felony murder suspect on the street and we do a car stop, we're gonna gain compliance, have firearms out, use verbal commands, get body positioning, shut the vehicle off, keys out the window, et cetera, et cetera, and then felony prone them out before we take them into custody. We have the same suspect. The only thing that has changed is venue. And for him, this is his last shot for freedom. So let's talk about how we set this up correctly. Bring that buddy. Once we've done so, we're gonna place that suspect in a position of physical disadvantage. This can change based upon the environment or the space, but principle-wise, you'll understand what we're gonna say. First, we can get his feet out in front of him, ankles crossed. It's physically, structurally impossible for him to stand up with his legs out in front of him and his ankles crossed. Gain that. Next, head goes down on the table, eyes turned away from where the contacting officer is going to work. Rob him of his visual acuity. We're also putting him into a head pin position. Next, free arm extended and rotated into a position that allows us to make physical contact and we can measure body tension through the, con or the, uh, the support officer or the cover officer. Then the contact officer can move around and go ahead and affect his cuff exchange. If we feel that bodily tension, if we get the resistance that we're expecting, we are in a literally 20 times better position to immediately take and start affecting contact with him and this is not gonna go his way, not even close. Take this one, we know sometimes when we get tired, when we get lazy, when we get complacent, we've got years on the job and we think, oh, we're in the police station, this will never go bad. That's exactly when it goes bad. Suspects do not care about your beard, they don't care about your tattoos, they don't care about your resume, they don't care about your multicam. All they see is vulnerability and opportunity. And if we give them that opportunity and we look vulnerable, they will exploit it. Luckily in this case, nobody important got hurt. Take this one and add it to your repertoire. We think it may come in handy. Stay safe.